final question from chapter four. It's towards the end of the chapter. It's a slightly harder problem. You probably won't get time to do in tutorials, so I thought it might be a nice one to do here. So we're working in the vector space. Now I'm changing the question a little bit. Please notice it's P3 in the question, but the arithmetic takes too long. Once you've seen it done for P2, you can extend it yourself to P3 if you're interested in seeing that. So we're going to work with P2. We have an inner product defined on this space of two polynomials P and Q, and the inner product is you multiply them together and you integrate from minus one to one. You might like to check that this actually does define an inner product on this space. We're going to find an orthonormal basis for P2. Now, in fact, this orthonormal basis has a interesting uh, name, these are called the Legendre polynomials. And you can Google these and find interesting properties of these things. Now, how do we build an orthonormal basis for this? Well, we start off with our standard basis, which is not orthonormal. So we take our standard basis, which is 1, t and t squared. And we're going to apply the Gram-Schmidt algorithm in this case with this inner product. So we'll remember what that means then. So when we take, instead of taking dot products now, we're going to be taking inner products. Instead of taking lengths, we're going to be taking the inner product of something with itself and then taking the square root. So just be careful about the notation here. So I'm going to call this one, I'll call this one U1, U2, U3 to get some notation going. The first thing I want to work out, I've got to turn this one into a unit vector. You might think one looks like a unit vector, but actually in this space it's not, not with respect to this inner product. So I need to get the length of the vector u, one. And I'll look at the square of that. So the square of that is the inner product of it with itself. And that means I'm integrating between minus 1 and 1. 1 times 1 is 1 dt. And that turns out, of course, that's easy integral to be 2. So the length of this vector, oddly enough, is root 2. It's kind of counterintuitive. So I'm going to put the first of my unit vectors, which I'll call v1. I'm going to call, I'm going to write that to be. Um, divide this by its length, so that's 1 over root 2. So you take this vector, this function, this polynomial, and you divide by its length, which is root 2. Now, in the Gram-Schmidt algorithm, I am now going to take a vector I'm going to call w2. So I take u2 minus the projection of u2 onto v1. That's our first step in our Gram-Schmidt process. So u2 it starts life as that's my t. Now to get the projection of that onto that, I have to take the inner product of v1 and u2 times the vector v1. We don't need to divide by the length of v1 because we've already made it into a unit vector. So the formula is a bit easier when you normalise as you go. So that's t minus, now the inner product is the integral minus 1 to 1. So I have a 1 on root 2 for the v1, and my u2 was the vector t dt. So that's the coefficient multiplied by that one which is 1 on root 2. Now the 1 on root 2's come out, I get a half. And if you integrate t from minus 1 to 1, you get 0. So I simply end up with t. So that's nice. So in fact, it turned out that these two were, with respect to this inner product, these were already orthogonal. Now, we have to normalize this vector. Well, by the way, we didn't know that a priori. There's no way of telling that these two are orthogonal. Well, I suppose you can do the calculations up here and check they're orthogonal, but it wasn't in instantly obvious, so we had to go through the Gram-Schmidt process. So I need to get the length now of the vector w2 and the square of that. So that's the integral of 
I take this and multiply it by itself and integrate. And that gives me two thirds when you do the arithmetic on that one. So, I'm now going to put my second unit vector. I now need to normalize this vector. So I divide by its length. Its length is the square root of two thirds. So you divide by that is the square root of three halves. So at the moment then, this vector and this vector are orthogonal and they both have length one. Finally then, we now need to take, I'm going to put W3 is equal to U3 minus the projection of uh, U3 onto V1 and then minus the projection of U3 onto V2. So, now, our U3, we've got to keep track of what's what here, so we've got that vector T squared, minus, I'm going to take the integral of, minus 1 to 1, I'm going to multiply this one, which is 1 on root 2, times t squared dt, and then that one gets multiplied by v1, which is 1 on root 2. Then I have to subtract off the integral, minus 1 to 1. I do u3, uh, u3 which was t squared, times v2, which had another t, so that's t cubed, times root 3 on 2 dt multiplied by v2 which was the square root of 3 on 2t. So I get that complicated expression there. Now this one is, because I've got t cubed here, this one's going to be 0. So that's nice, we can get rid of that. This one here is, I'm going to get a half there. I integrate that, I get a third, between minus one and one I get two thirds. And that's it. And that one is zero. So that's t squared minus a third. Finally then, I have to work out the length of this one. And that's going to be the integral minus one to one of t squared minus a third dot product with itself, so multiply by itself. And to save me some time, I'm just going to tell you that that comes out to be 8 on 45. So, let me now come back and um, squeeze it in here. So, I'm now going to put my V3, the final one, I have to take this polynomial and divide by its length. Sorry, not root 45, just 45 at the moment. So that's t squared minus a third. And I take the square root of that, turn it upside down. So that's the square root of 45 over 8. And then here is my orthonormal basis. So the V1, you remember, was 1 on root 2. The V2 is root 3 on 2, square root t. And finally, I have this one. And I can simplify that a little bit. You get 3 root 10 on 4 when you simplify this a little bit. So 3 root 10 on 4 times t squared minus a third. So that one is an orthonormal basis or P2, with respect to this inner product. Now, by the way, you look at these and you think, well, they look pretty ugly looking polynomials. You've got all these ugly coefficients here. Well, you know, as in the fairy stories, sometimes the ugly duckling turns out to be quite beautiful. And it happens here with this. These Legendre polynomials actually have a lot of remarkable properties and turn out to be very, very useful in doing all sorts of interesting things with. So even though they look rather unattractive, they're actually very interesting. And they're perpendicular in the sense of their dot product with each other under this inner product is always zero, and they've all got length one with respect to this inner product. 
Uh, in the original question, it asked you to do P3, so I invite you to continue on then and work out what the next one is using the same sorts of ideas I've mentioned.